Well, welcome everybody. Hopefully you can see us now. <laughs> but welcome to the Quantum Alignment Show. And we are here today to continue to talk about about your planets and Saturn. So and yes, this is recorded. It'll be recorded on Facebook and it will be a record you'd be able to see it on the Facebook Human Design for Everyone page or We'll also have it on YouTube and we'll send it out in a, in a replay email. If you remember last week or if you didn't see it, you can see it on the Human Design for Everyone page. Karen talked about Saturn and the cycles of Saturn and what Saturn means in your own personal natal chart. And we had a lot at the end, Karen tried to take as many people as she could to discuss what Saturn's challenges were, would be for you. And so what we decided to do since Karen is traveling She's actually, I think, on the road someplace in Texas right now. Hmm. And we, we decided that we would come on and we would take your questions about your Saturn. So what this means is that in the comments, either under the Facebook Live or here in the comments on our Zoom, you need to have your human design chart and you need to read us what your Saturn gates are. And we're also going to ask because... We don't really want to leave you just with the challenges, so we're going to take on a challenge ourselves. <laughs> and we're going to tell you that once you actually know what your challenge and you've mastered your challenge, it might take a life, it, on and off you're going to be working with this challenge your whole life. But then as you're mastering it, you're also going to be receiving the gifts of Jupiter. So what you would want to do is you'd want to put in the comments under, the, under this video or in the comments here, in the chat on Zoom, what your Saturn gates are. And I am looking right now for, and what we, so what we have. Well, here. really quick, Cindy, do you want to tell them what the symbol is on their chart so they know where Saturn and Jupiter are? Since we know what the signs are, they may not. <laughs> well, Saturn itself looks like a cross with a curly cube, and I'm going to show you really quickly. I did not prepare a screen share, and I'm sorry, but if you recall, Saturn would be, so I'm going here backwards, the cross with the curly cube, and then right above it, Jupiter actually looks a lot like a, now I'm trying to think, a four, mm -hmm. curly cube four. And so we have a couple people here that have done and in the chat and we're going to start out so Mary are you ready to start first mm -hmm. and I see in the chat that they're talking about the Saturn and then they have well they have the Saturn both conscious and unconscious so okay so they're not sharing their Jupiter right now they're not sharing their Jupiter yeah. if, if they get a chance to share their Jupiter but Mundi we'll start out with Mundi Mundi is gate 47 and 46 okay so we are looking at well, and this is a beautiful, 47 I understand quite well. 47 is about realization. It's about coming into, I don't want to say rationalization. It's more um, about mindset and coming into, stepping into your power through what your, what your ideas are. Um, it's one of the mind gates. So you're going to be looking at, for your challenge, and I'm assuming that you're conscious, you're going to be looking at your challenge as far as um, what kind of actions you're going to take in regards to your ideas, your mindset, and, and making those real, making them a real, concrete idea. So that's your challenge on your conscious side. Now, I wrote it down and then I lost it. 46 is your unconscious, so that's right, by it. Um, and that's the love of body. People with this um, gait, you see a lot of yoga instructors or people who like to work with body, uh, massage therapists, any type things like that dance it can be dance but it's really getting into your body and being a part of your body so it's loving that uh, no rejecting of yourself love every piece of your body even the cellulite as I've learned to do over the years but that's really what um, your unconscious challenges with the Saturn gate 
Well, thank you. And Jamie, are you? Marius is sixty-two fifty-three. All right. So that, I'm looking in. Yeah, I have her Jupiter off. You have her Jupiter. Okay. Yeah. All right. So for you, Maria, um, fifty-three is all about starting things, but not necessarily finishing things. And sixty-two is all about planning. So for you, the challenge can be making sure that you understand that it's not your job to necessarily finish everything that you start. You know, there's a gift in you being able to start things for people who can't and pass them on to them. And the planning part is, you know, planning around that as you start things. Is this something, you know, that I am going to finish? Because there are, you know, at times you're going to finish things that you start. But if you're making sure that you're properly planning to be able to pass this off to other people so that you don't get caught in the spiral of trying to finish the things that you started because you haven't like properly, you know, planned it out or may have seen through everything that needed to be done for this other person to take it over. In that, your Jupiter reward is 32, which is endurance. So knowing that the things that are for you and even the things that may not as you journey through and you're moving correctly through your, you know, through the Saturn of starting and planning that you will, you know, by design, by default, you're going to have the endurance. So you don't have to get caught up in the details. You don't have to figure everything out. Just trust and know, like, don't put the pressure on yourself that, like, I have to do this and I have to do this now. Just trust and know that when you are following and entering into things correctly, that you're going to get clear guidance on how to play, you know, how it will all play out. You're going to get clear guidance on if it's for you or not. And you're going to have the endurance to be able to withstand it all. Thank you. Um, okay, Mary, we, I have one from Facebook. Lori has unconscious Saturn at 27, conscious at 24. 27 and 24. Wonderful. Well, 27... Um, I look at like, well, 27 is about just nourishing yourself, um, altruism, being one with that. Um, it's like when you're, as a Saturn repressed gate, you're going to be looking at self-sacrificing yourself or um, not putting your needs first. So that is part of your challenge is to overcome that. So make sure that you're getting self-care and doing things for yourself. Uh, and then you said 24 was her other one. Uh, gate 24 is the gate of rationalization. So it's <laughs> getting stuck in making something right that may not be right. And you become, it becomes a challenge as far as knowing when to move forward. You might rationalize staying in a relationship for too long or you might rationalize why you're spending money where you shouldn't be spending money so that's part of your struggle is to learn you know when to move on when to move forward and also remember that piece of the the ultra uh, the just being with yourself and and not sacrificing everything for everybody else so once you overcome those, you'll get your Jupiter reward. Did she have a Jupiter? I didn't. Uh, no, there wasn't one. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Jamie, did you write down, were you able to see? Yeah. And, and did you get that she put the wrong gates? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for you, Judy, um, 61 is that, um, you know, it's a gate of wonder. It's, a beautiful, beautiful gate of getting these amazing downloads direct from source, but it can um, bring a madness about it. It can leave you feeling overwhelmed. And um, if you're not, you know, just allowing that space for it to be the 61 or the 60 is, you know, the resourcefulness, it's innovative, it, no, it sees what's there, it's part of the channel that sees what's there that can be transformed. But with it, it can almost, when you're trying, to, when you have it with the 61, you can get so overwhelmed by everything that's coming in and all the ideas 
that you lose the wonder, you lose, you know, what it is that, wait a minute, am I, I'm going the right Saturn, right? And Jupiter is, okay, yeah, sorry, I thought I was thinking the 41, I wrote wrong. Okay, yeah, you know, so it is all about that, not getting overwhelmed, just allowing things to come through, because it can bring an exhaustion to you, you know, it has like a feeling of exhaustion to it because you have all this coming in and you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to innovate and you're trying to create and then, you know, the kind of the monkey mind can start running and you can get overwhelmed where when you allow yourself the capacity to just receive what's coming through, you know, the resources open on the wonder that can be held with it, the possibilities that are there that can be with all this beautiful information. The, um, and that's where you know, your Jupiter is in 60, and that's where, you know, as well, which I love that you have it in your Saturn and your Jupiter, because you can, you know, once you master, quote, unquote, getting through the challenge in the lower end of it, it opens up so much, and it goes into the 41, which is all about imagination. You know, it's being able to see what is possible if, what is possible for me, what is possible for my community, and really holding that space and holding that energy to really see the world as you may want it to see or experience the world as you may want it to see for you to be able to take what people may need or what they're not able to see and you can convey that message. Okay, and now we're going back to Facebook and it's Sharon, Mary, and I want to just, um, I'm going to take one minute. When we're gi you're giving us both your design and so your conscious and your unconscious gates. And people are saying, well, does it really matter? Well, you're conscious, you're probably more aware of the energy. This is what you're more comfortable with. It. The unconscious might be what you unconsciously react with. But it's still the flavor of the gates is what your challenge is going to be. It's not necessarily, it doesn't, it, it wouldn't really change what the definition of the gates are. So are you ready for sharing, Mary? Sure. And also, I just would like to add, like with the, the unconscious and conscious gates, they blend together. It's really more of a story. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I can understand why some people want to know more what they're consciously aware of, but I think you're going to recognize it just naturally. Okay. Now, Sharon is Saturn is nine, gates 19 and 41. And her Saturn Jupiter, is 19 and 41. Okay. And Jupiter is 3713. 37. I'm sorry, did you say 13? 37 and 13, yes. Okay, okay. Well, 19 is a fun one. And um, 19 is about wanting. Um, it's one of the money gates. So if you look at it, it's really a sensitive gate as well. So it's, it's having a sensitivity around wanting and being okay with what you want as far as your needs go. Uh, however, when you master this, it's, it's, an, it's an abundance channel, or an abundance gate, and it can really bring in, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, resources towards you. It's also, it, it can manifest in, in somewhat emotional ways, and the way that I, I kind of associate the 19 with I recognize it myself. I have it. It's one of those kind of anxiety-producing gates. You want it, but there, there's this waiting as well. Um, it can be, oh, it's more like, it's more like a, the way I look at it is it's like a maturing of the wanting. It's, when you're a child, you want something really right then, right at that moment, and it's a learning to be patient and learning to bring in the right resources for that time and then moving forward. And then you had the 41 as well. So let me jump over there real quick. And so this comes off the root. So it's also, again, um, about energy as well as like this pulsating energy. And it will look at fantasies. So it's bringing new ideas from your experiences. So if you bring the 19 and the 41 together as your challenge, you're looking at being patient around wanting, bringing in resources that create abundance, and taking the 
fantasies, your creative ideas, and moving them uh, into not an emotional energy, more of a more of a true action plan, if that's what you would like to look at it like that way. Um, daydreaming is found in this channel or in this gate. So you might find yourself daydreaming a lot and not taking actions on things. So that can also be part of you want this, but are you willing to take the action on it? Now, if you overcome those challenges, we will look at 37 and 13. The gate 13 is um, a gate, what, which I think it's actually kind of fun. You have people that will share with you stories of their past. And one of the, if you're looking at Jupiter as a reward for that, you're 13, you get to learn about all sorts of stories that people will provide to you. And you're a gatekeeper to those. You're, you know, how do you help people with those stories that they share with you? Um, you definitely need to protect them. Their integrity is, your integrity to their story matters deeply. But people will share with you and open up to you very well. So it's a great um, a great reward if you're in the coaching business or any kind of um, service-based business because people will trust you and share with you quite frequently. And the gate 37 blends perfectly into that because it's the gate of friendship. So you will bloom into magical, creative, exciting friendships. And when you blend the story piece together with the friendship and being wise. Oh, sorry, guys, there's a jet going over. Hopefully you can't hear that. <laughs> um, but it's, it's um, becoming the story keeper that somebody who can listen to somebody's stories, create really wonderful friendships. And then it's also about sharing those resources with your tribe or your community in a positive way. Well, thank you, Jamie. Are you ready to Mm -hmm. Bear with now. We're we're back into the chat on the Zoom room, and okay. it's Carol. Yes. All right. So Carol in Saturn has eight conscious and sixteen unconscious. Um, on the higher expression of these, the eight is all about like making your unique contribution to the world, like really leaving an impact through the way you are and how you do things. The sixteen is enthusiasm gets people excited like you can't help but you know have an effect on people if you're having a challenge with this it can come from if you're trying to meet the needs of others or to fit into somebody else's mold or fit into somebody else's box and or just life happens and you get out of alignment and you're not living you know in alignment with your true authenticity you can almost and you can gauge this because you might feel very melancholic. You might, you know, just be feeling like I'm, you know, I should be doing more. I can be doing more. Um, the 16 can feel really, really scattered, you know, because it can be like a really good focused enthusiasm that's really enthusiastic about one thing. Or if you find that you're not quite in alignment or, you know, you're just still kind of dancing with this, to master, you're just really scattered. So then you're just kind of scattered, you're depressed, it's hard to, you know that you're here to do something and you may not be feeling that you're doing that. So, you know, it's really about staying in alignment, staying authentic and being excited about it. You know, being excited about who you be and who you are. Once you master that, your reward is um, 45 and 39. And this is beautiful. Most some people wouldn't always look at the 39 as like being a reward because it's provocation. It can poke people, you know, but once you master your Saturn and you are able to stand in the power of who you are and who you be and to do so enthusiastically, the 45 is the queen. It's the leader. It's the CEO. It can also be the king, but I'm speaking to Carol. So, you know, the queen and the queen sits on the throne and the queen is able to say with the 39 of activation and provocation, this is what my people need. And you're in such a place of power and authenticity that people aren't put off by it. They're inspired by it and they want to take action. So these two together, really, when you bridge them both and you master and you come into your reward, it's a very, very powerful, impactful leading energy that is really here to bring change. 
and guide people and show them. So I'm excited, Carol, to watch you put on that crown and just go rule. <laughs> Okay, Cindy, hmm? Cindy, before you um, jump forward, can I address Monday because she's having a struggle with the, the very first reading? Is that okay? That's fine if you'd like I'll to. Do it, I'll do it really brief so she can have more understanding. I definitely understand 47, um, if I'm understanding it right, 47 is in her conscious Saturn. And that is a very difficult energy to overcome because it's about the need to know. <laughs> and it's about finding right timing with the need to know. It's almost like having an epiphany or, or um, a new... Okay. Let me, Mary, she's saying 47 is the unconscious. Oh, 47 is the unconscious. Okay. So. She, would, she really wants it. And in her further comment, she really wants to get a sense of what the 46 being conscious... And because part of what Karen has been mentioning in earlier ones is about the soul activation readings on how the soul, yes. so she wanted to know more how the 46th, and because it's in the G, and I know that you did talk a lot about bringing that into the G and how that could be a challenge, how she could maybe think about how that would be challenging. Yeah, so... I think when you look at the 46, it's about being in your body, trusting. It's actually trusting your soul, the, what your soul wants to do. So I can absolutely see where that would be playing a part. I mean, you have the 46 that's about being present in your body, loving your body, um, being sensual, just enjoying all of your body and then you have the 47 that plays a role in that as well that wants to know why <laughs> it wants to know why now and it may not come to you at the exact moment you want it to it may just be like like I said like this epiphany like oh I feel so sensual in my body when I'm doing this and that leads me to the answer the realization of the 47 so I hope that helps a little bit more with the clarity of that. Okay, and now going on, we're going to keep you in the keep you sure. in the yep. This Absolutely. is Lily from the face, Facebook. She says she has Saturn at with gate six, line six, and unconscious gate eighteen, line four, and her Jupiter is gates forty-seven and eighteen. Forty-seven and eighteen. So she's got two eighteen. So they're going to play. That's going to play together which is actually kind of fun because it's like once you can overcome your struggle you get to not have to struggle with it anymore <laughs> so let's take a look and um you said that the six was her unconscious did i hear that right that is correct okay so we'll start with your unconscious and it's about friction um yeah it's it's one of the quote unquote sexual gates um there's a, a lot of energy <laughs> into it. Um, I, I, I don't like the word friction, though. So I'm trying to come up with um, a Im impact. I'm sorry? Impact. Yeah, yeah. That if that helps, yes, I did. That, absolutely. <laughs> I have Thank that, you. so I, it's in my notes. That's fine. Yeah, no, I like that <laughs> a lot better. Because friction to me always sounds like, um, like you're going against something. But it's, it's impact. And it can be one of those... Gates, you're going to attract people, um, sometimes not people you like <laughs> or that you want anything to do with. So, and that could be a very unconscious thing for you because you're not understanding how these people are coming into your aura and you have this great impact on them. So they kind of latch on <laughs> to you. Um, but it's about really allowing intimacy into your life in a positive, respectful way, uh, a way that honors you. And since that's part of, oh no, the 18 was part of your Jupiter. So let's go over to the 18 piece. So that's your unconscious. And then you'll be looking at, um, the 18 is about, well, it's more, it goes more into the accounting type um, in, improving the resources for the group as well it's a fear gate so it can you may have some fear around stepping into your power with 
with the, it's not necessarily always money either. It's resources. It's, it's like, you, I'm blending the two together. You're unconscious and you're conscious. You're attracting people in that may, you may not want into your aura, but you're having an impact on them. They're coming in. You have the responsibility almost to take care of the resources for the tribe, the accountability piece, and improving on, on what it is. Um, they're both really impacting gates like the the gate 18 can be can be harsh for some people to deal with as far as knowing exactly what to do with the resources how you're handing them out and but when you master it you're living in full integrity so it's like you know you're doing the right thing you're doing it for the right reasons and you're also that's part of your reward so you'll just have this knowing that when you step into that power and that you're taking care of the accounting the resources and and you're managing those well that you're confident in it you're just going to be completely a-okay with it um let's see the 47 is another one of your um, that's your reward, and that's, you know, we talked about that one already, but for you particularly, if you're working with the resources, how things can, um, how you can fix things and, and being confident in how you fix things, you'll also get the realization with your reward that you've, you've done it right, that you don't need to know exactly when the answer is coming, but the answer is there, and you know it, and you're confident in how you know that it's there. You know that you've done the best for the accounting piece of it, the, the attraction piece of it, the impact that you've had on everybody, and you know that your answers are correct and you stand in that power. Well, that was really good. Now, I'm going to take a brief thing to remind everybody right now what, we, what Jamie and Mary are both saying is it's just a small piece of the puzzle that is you. I mean, right now, we're just taking what activations you have in your Saturn, which in the way that we read life purpose, that's one of the challenges that you chose to overcome or to learn from. So that's what they're bringing. And then once you learn that, then you're we're looking at the Jupiter if you have it, so that you can see what you might have, what that you feel is a reward that becomes very easy. It's one of your gifts that you can share. And even when you have a challenge, once you master it, it it can turn around and become a gift. So, but the big part I want people to remember is this is just a small piece of the puzzle. That's you, this, and it's and it's just part of it so that you can learn that. But just throwing that in there. And Jamie is now ready with Maria, correct? Marie. Marie? Yeah, Marie. On Marie. Marie. Yeah. Hi, Marie. <laughs> um, so for you, having the 12 and the 15 in your Saturn, um, it can be tough, I'm not going to lie. Um, 15 is the gate of extremes, um, but it's also the gate of the love of humanity. Uh, 12 can, I hate saying this, but I have to be, keep it real, you know, on the lower expression, it can almost be a malicious energy, but bear in mind, the higher expression is the romantic, it's the love, you know. So you may experience things that are very extreme and they can put you into a place of like wanting to respond, wanting to come back and, and not from a place of love, you know, or not from a place of clarity or not from a place of peace because it's so extreme. And it's, it's that, I don't say that in judgment. I just say because the extremes of the 15 can be very extreme. If you think about, you know, humanity doesn't tend to come together over the good times. Humanity comes together when there's tornadoes, when there's death, when there's war, when there's destruction. You know, and it's all about that. When you see these things, when you experience things like this and you're able to come from here and come from that place of, with love, you know, it's, so the romantic doesn't necessarily have to be romantic love, but it's love. So when you're able to come from heart in these times of extremes, 
that then turns into your Jupiter, you know, or brings you to your Jupiter reward, which the 49 is revolution, and the 63, it's questioning. But the 49 says, I see this, or, you know, this is what I've seen, and it's not right, and I know because I'm wise from what I've seen or what I've experienced, you know, that I this needs to change. And the 63 in the right expression is able to ask the right questions. It inquires of the universe. It doesn't, you know, demand or want to know why, 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 why did this happen? It says, how, how can I bring change? How can I start the right revolution so this doesn't happen again? And in that revolution, that's how change comes. So when you're able to really come from love in the times of extremes and really be the love that humanity needs and, ex and, and be the, em the embodiment or the expression of the love of humanity, in that that wisdom comes out and you are able to be the wise one, be the guiding one, and be the one that knows who, how to ask the right questions to bring about the lasting change so things like this you know, don't continue to occur, be it collectively or personally. Excellent. And Mary, you have Enrica and you gave her Saturn as 1721. Does she have a Jupiter? I did not see that. I'm, I'm trying to double check comments, but Facebook makes all the comments not. <laughs> That's all right, because I'm trying to like make sure I'm going in conscious order and unconscious. So I, I for, you know, this is this is what okay. Once call. again, um, we just had a question come in on Facebook before you go. Patty asks, "How do you find your Saturn in your human design?" So it's the Saturn is the one that looks like a cross that has a tail, and it's towards the bot well when you get your chart from us um it's towards the bottom and the one right above it looks like a curly q number four and that's your jupiter maybe i'll quickly draw them in between but go ahead <laughs> okay and i i'm sorry i forgot who this was for oh, uh, enrica okay enrica um so the challenges of Saturn with the 1721, um, so the 17 gate is a really powerful gate because what it does is it takes information that over time you become, you, you create a, cor a corrective type of energy. Uh, the, the interesting thing about the 17 is it, it takes a lot of time for that opinion. It's about opinions, basically. So if you have this opinion that you want to share that's going to create change with a community or even within yourself, it's going to take time for that to mutate. It's not something that's just going to happen like overnight. So it's about finding the right time to share those opinions so there can be a mutation and the change that needs to take place can then happen. You also have the gate 21, which is the treasurer, and this, this gate, um, people with this defined gate in Saturn, I would say your, your challenge is you love things, you love to buy things, love material things, um, and it can be somewhat... Um, well, the gate itself is called the treasure, so it's like, how do you hand out your resources equally, um, not become selfish and not overgive? How do you do it that is in a sustainable way? So you might find yourself, uh, with combining those two together, you might find yourself having opinions that you want everybody to take on right now, and you are possibly giving your resources away, <laughs> unlimited resources, just to give away to change the opinions of other people when the opinion is really about finding the right time so the opinion can change the entire community and the direction the community goes and learning to use the resources that you have, both giving to yourself because you love your things and it's a beautiful gate and giving to the tribe because it's, it's part of the tribal circuitry. So it's, I love that energy. 
Thank you. And now we're back over to Facebook for Jamie. And I'm sorry, I didn't write down the whole name. I, it, I think it's Dave. Could be Dave. Dave David. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to write everyone down. But Sat, and you have the Saturn as it's unconscious 53.3 and conscious 39.3 with the Jupiter 37 line 5 unconscious and 36 line 5 conscious. All right. So for you, say, <laughs> say uh, <laughs> you can, um, again, the 53, the starting things, the, um, it can even have a fickle quality to it. It might want to stay, for you, I'm, I, the message coming through is more that it may want to stay more compact. It, it might not want to reach that point of expansion. And the reason for that is because your conscious Saturn challenge is gate 39, which is provocation. And provocation, just because we carry it, doesn't mean we're the only ones that provoke. We can provoke or be provoked. Oh, my family. <laughs> so in that, you may find that if somebody is provoking you and you're responding or you're, you're accepting an invitation that comes from a place of provocation, you're, you're compacting in, you're shutting down rather than expanding. So for you, when you're able to take the things that come at you and you're able to, rather than be provoked into compacting and taking action into expansion, you open up a new amount of abundance, you know, be it whatever it is, money, relationships, career, happiness, joy, whatever that is for you. And again, it's because, you know, it's mastering that, not just, you know, not just hitting back because you got provoked, you know, or not just shutting down because somebody came and provoked you. It's about saying, you know what, this is right for me. Or, and even if this doesn't feel right for me, you can be provoked in a good way. Be provoked into taking action and be provoked into expanding. When you do, the 37 unconscious, 37 is also harmony. The 36 can be a red flag gate known as chaos, but on the higher expression, it's adventure. It knows when to wait for that response. So when you're able to not be provoked into chaos and you're able to take deliberate action and from a place of wanting to expand and experience an expansion of abundance, you're rewarded with this beautiful harmony and that will take you and support you to go on a beautiful adventure. It, you know, the chaos can come from not being connected to source, from not being connected to God, from not being connected to spirit, whatever it is for you. This allows just a knowing. And it's, it's a, a feeling because the 36 is emotional energy. You know, the 37 is also emotional energy. So this is all about knowing the right time, feeling for the right time. And when you do, you're going to know that because you're going to head out. You know, you're going to feel the harmony and you're going to head out, you know, head out on these beautifully adventurous times and journeys that await you. Thank you. And Mary, you're working with Eva with the Saturn uh, Conscious Gate 8, Unconscious 20. Okay. Jupiter, conscious gate 10, unconscious gate, I believe, 58. Okay, okay. Oh, what a lovely, beautiful Jupiter reward standing there. Um, let's talk about the Saturn, um, the Saturn challenge. The, the gate 8 is about contribution, the need to contribute contribute to society, contribute to your community, contribute to your family. It's, it's really about the need to express your creative self. The challenge with it is, is that it needs to be recognized. Otherwise, it, it just flounders. It's out there not getting any kind of, When there's no recognition, you can't express yourself, so it can become really frustrating. Um, but it's all about finding the right timing and because you have the gate 20 in this as well, it's your Saturn is about becoming 
trans tr it's all about transformation it's continuous over a lifetime it's the metamorphosis okay so it when you look at it your how are you going to transform into creative self expression while waiting for right timing and allowing somebody to recognize your transformation so it really creates a positive impact so that's your challenge for your saturn now when you look at your jupiter um you've got 10 and 58 well the 10 is the love of your the love of self it's falling in love with yourself knowing that what all you are every single piece of you is a gift from above and it's your loving soul here to express yourself so when and then you move into the 58 which is about living life to the fullest it's it's joy it's happiness so when you learn so let's put it into a good sentence so you can figure it out your saturn challenge when you learn to be recognized allow yourself to express yourself in the most creative fascinating ways when it's recognized through right timing as you're transforming and creating all that you want and you'll continue to transform and be comfortable with transforming you will reap the rewards of loving being in your soul in your body and that will come through the most joyous self expression and it's like just the joy of life so i i really like that one too <laughs> nice. um okay jamie you've got linda and she just gave her saturn as conscious gate three line six unconscious gate 42 line five all right so for you linda your challenge is going to be take when things you know, come up for you to finish, to not finish them in chaos. <laughs> the gate three and the lower expression can create chaos for the sake of creating chaos. It, um, and it can feel very, you know, in the chaos can feel very out of control. So it's, you know, it's trying to control everything. The 42 can have a grasping quality to it and um, it can feel stuck. So be it projects, relationships, whatever it is, you might find times that you feel really out of control and chaos can erupt, you know, or you can cause more chaos grasping at trying to fix whatever this thing is. The beauty of it is that on the other side, the higher expression, when you master your Saturn, there's such a place of innovation. It's... Um, synthesis there's completion and celebration so when you find that things are coming at you and you don't know what to make of them and you're just feeling really out of control and you might feel like you're spiraling and it's just chaos and you're just you know grabbing on as tight as you can holding on you know pretty much for dear life trying to make something out of it trust and know that you're designed in this challenge to take what is there you're able to take what's already there and do something innovative with it you're able to bring it to a place of completion and in that completion that is where you'll know it because you feel it it's the synthesis it's just it all lines up and it's just it goes it goes it flows it flows and in that that's where you find the celebration so when you find yourself in you know moments that you just feel really out of control just take a deep breath and just pause for a moment and just say, you know what, okay, uh, that's just my Saturn kicking me, you know, because this one can, can be a little bit of a, you know, a more trying one. So just trust and know that you're able to handle it and to just pause and recenter and know that you, you can take whatever, everything you need to turn it around is already there. It's just a, ma a matter of pausing in the chaos or in the confusion and being able to just loosen up that grip a little bit and know that the universe has your back and you already have everything there. It's just a matter of putting it in the right order to find the right flow. And then all is well and you can celebrate. Okay, before, before um, Mary goes and does Athena, I want to, we're, we're trying to get to as many as we can. Again, if you're listening to the gates, because you're going to have some of the gates that 
are going to be repeating. So even if you're, it's not, we don't get to you, you can listen for your Saturn gate or your Jupiter gate or the other way around. And um, mentioning really quick, as Karen did, she has her book that you can go, the Human Design for Everyone book. And we'll talk a little bit more about towards the end, but so that was my brief interruption while they took a deep breath. <laughs> and now um, it's Athena's turn. She okay. mentioned that her Saturn is both, is conscious and unconscious is in gate 55 and her Jupiter is three and 23. Okay. Well, and this, this is, I'm going to caveat here real quick. Whenever I see a double number, like a 55, which I have as well in my Saturn, I have a double number. I think that it is very much about an intensification of this energy. So this is something that your challenge is here to really create a change in you. And the gate 55 is about the spirit of life. It's about, um, actually, it's abundance. It's, it's, it's taking in a in a snap going from lack mentality to complete freedom when you've got it mastered so one of the challenges that you might face is that you get stuck in why don't i have enough or why do i have money and then i lose money or i want more i want more so one of those themes may be playing out for you over and over again, but it's really about realizing that abundance comes from within. It's that power of just transforming right there. Like I am abundant and I know how to, I know how to manage this. It's, it becomes just the spirit of, of living. Like I said, the mastery is about freedom. So it's ultimate freedom. So when you master that, you move into your, um, you said gate, uh, Jupiter thir three and twenty three. Uh, well, well, the gate three we've talked briefly about was the it's the gate of ordering, but it comes around about as far as like work that re work that um, creates change. It's a it's actually energy that can really create a large amount of change, but it has to be right timing. So it's about finding the right timing to create change and bringing forward that energy to the community, um, sharing any kind of um, idea or finding work that can help create change when the timing's right. And then you've got the gate 23 which is about assimilation and bringing that forward. And it, again, is about, <laughs> it's about finding the right timing for all of this. You can create a large amount of change once you have assimilated the right timing for yourself, how you have assimilated um, taking any kind of ideas or resources into the community but it's a trusting and a knowing. So when you look back at the challenge of the Saturn, living in the spirit of abundance, mastering that so you can be free to recognize right timing in all regards. So you are bringing your ideas to the community and you're not looked upon as um, a freak in any way because uh, you, the gate 23 can be, if it's not brought on by right timing, people can look at it as a very weird idea. But when you, because it's your Jupiter, you'll have already mastered that piece of it, and it will just be, it, you'll just be able to know the right timing and bring forward all of the abundance and freedom that you feel, and share that with the world, and really have an idea that changes the community with the right timing. I want to take a moment to thank both Mary and. Jamie, but we're still going. Okay. We've got about seven minutes before, and then we'll. It'll be oh, that goes fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the timekeeper. <laughs> Jamie, your, your next person up is Trisha. Her Saturn mm -hmm. is 32 line one, unconscious, 32 line two, conscious, and her Jupiter is 20 line two, conscious, and 45.5. Well, they're both kind of. 
I just have to say on Mary's last one, if you saw me laughing at the freak comment, it's because I have 23 in my Mercury, so I could, with the four, so I communicate these freak answers. So I was just like, yeah, I know that feeling. So I wasn't laughing at you. I was with you and your freakness. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I think all the energy is so beautiful because it's not freaky. It's, no. it's, it's, it's wise. Ooh, I'll take that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And for you, Trisha, um, the 32, in the lower expression, it can be compromising. It can even be an unrealistic dreamer. On the higher expressions, it's conservation and endurance. So for you, it's really about, oh, I'm just feeling for you personally, but I know, Trish, so... Um, it's really about, you know, not being that unrealistic dreamer that I can do this all. I can, you know, do this and 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 that too. It's really about being able to pull in and not compromise yourself. And I, you know, I think you're you're aware of this now. So what's forward coming forward and, you know, moving forward to you once you master this and as you master it, is that you're really going to come into a place where you can conserve your energy and you can say no a lot easier and not feel so guilty about it. You're, and in that, that again is when that energy to endure the things that you do need to do, because I know there's so much, you know, waiting for you, knowing that you're going to have the endurance to do it. And I know it's really hard, but it's about, you know, getting realistic with what you can and can't do. And in that, that's going to help conserve the energy and it's going to help pull you back more into alignment, into the center, you know, of yourself, of where you need to be, of you at the core of who you be. And that's going to give you the endurance, you know, to really enjoy and sustain the reward, your Jupiter reward. Again, another crown. We got the queen, the 45, you know, coupled with the 20, which is a present. And it's, brings an energy of excitement to the present. So when you're able to, you know, step into what's right for you, when you master this, you're given the endurance to really be the queen that you are, to be that presence. You know, it's a powerful, powerful presence, and it gets people excited. And you're going to be able to, you know, quote, unquote, rule and rule your kingdom, rule your people, rule your being with excitement. And again, it's another, it's a really impactful combination. So just, you know, honoring yourself, which you're well on your way to doing right now. Stick with it. Keep going because you're coming into your mastery. And then you get to wear your crown, you know, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you how you both feel. Do you both feel like you want to take one more? I mean, I do have more, but we could be here for a couple hours. And we, did, we don't want to, I want to. Watch everybody's energy, and that's sure. you know, cosmic timekeeper here. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, I can take. I can take one more. Yeah. Okay, so one Mary, more. your next one is from the Facebook. Gail, her Saturn. Okay. She didn't mention a Jupiter. Saturn is gate nine and gate five. Gate nine and gate five. And did is it? Well, um, did it say if it was conscious or unconscious? I know it doesn't matter, but I'm trying to. Um, personality was five. Personality was five. Okay, so when you look at your Saturn challenge in regards to the nine, I, I have that one as well. It's not in my Saturn, but I get it. It's about you have this ability to focus, but not for large amounts of time. And especially if you have a hanging gate nine, um, you can also have attention deficit disorder show up in this gate. Uh, I'm not labeling you that as that, but it may be hard for you to focus on your work, getting it done because something will distract you. Something will take you away from it. And it's not that you have any ill intention of not completing it, what you're supposed to do. You just really have a hard time sitting there and getting that focus there. And the five kind of moves into it perfectly because you have, that is the gate of rhythmic patterns. It can be work patterns. It can be sexual patterns. And you really need to learn to respond to a rhythm 
of that pattern. Recognize your own pattern. And um, I, I, I rec my, recognize that. My husband has that one, so I get it. It's, it and he sleeps every Sunday. <laughs> I've told you guys <laughs> this. And it's just, I know not to schedule things because that's his rhythmic pattern. So when you learn your rhythmic pattern, and it can be around work, play, sex, um, doing your checkbook, whatever it is, know that there is a rhythm and that there is a pattern. And I think once you figure out your rhythm and your pattern, you'll be able to focus a lot more. So that's how those two would tie together. And since you don't have your Jupiter, I don't know, but um, I would imagine that once you figure those two out, you'll reap the rewards of your Jupiter pretty quickly. And Saturn can be a reward too. I mean, everyone... Okay. Everyone keeps thinking of Saturn as being this big taskmaster that's going to crush you down. But it can, I mean, it's also the part where you can be seen as a master in because it's, I mean, that's just a higher way that you can use the Saturn that you might have in there. Okay, our la and, and I'm sorry, the ones that, we, the people that we didn't get to, we, we have a limited amount of time and we are actually right on the hour right now. And so we have one more um, we have one more that Jamie's going to do, and it's Margo from Facebook. Her Saturn is 18 unconscious and 48 conscious, and Jupiter 47 unconscious and gate 48. All right. So, again, our buddy, the 18 coming around, which, again, you know, it's, it has a flavor of it can feel judgmental. <laughs> um, it can bring compromise. The 48 can, you know, it can... It's a fear gate as well. It can feel, you know, inadequate. It doesn't know enough. It's thirsty, so it's always seeking. So you may find that, you know, your challenge is to not allow your own feelings of inadequacy to cause you to be judgmental of things or to cause you to give a false identity to something, be it even yourself or a situation, another person, a relationship, you know, really being able to sit with it and just let that pass and then sit with what is really true and what is not. When you do that, you start to improve, you know, you improve the way you're looking at things. You're able to start perfecting it. The 48 is like, it's so wise, it's so deep, and it is so knowing. And when you allow yourself and master this challenge and are able to see things clearly for what they are, you're able to take something and improve it. You have the wisdom and the capability. You no longer feel inadequate. You're deep. You're a well of knowledge. With that knowledge, then, you move into your Jupiter reward, which is the 47 and, again, the 18. And here, the 47 is the epiphany. It's a positive expectation. So where in your Saturn challenge, the 18 might have presented more as like, it could almost, you know, be funky, depressive. It's, it's, I don't want to say hopeless or helpless, but it does have that Debbie Downer, you know, to it because it's like you can find something wrong with anything if you really want to with this energy, if you're not in alignment. So once you master that, there's this beauty. You can see, even if something's not perfect, you can look at it through the eyes of integrity and through the eyes of truth, through the eyes of the wisdom, and have the epiphany, have the knowing that, okay, you know what, this is what would make this perfect, or as perfect as it can be in this moment, because I don't know that anything's ever actually perfect. Everything's always changing and expanding, but that's the beauty of it. That's what you know, and that's what you see, and I know how to get this Thing to that place of quote unquote momentary perfection because when I find that then it's able to grow into something even more perfect and more perfect and more perfect and you're coming from here you're coming from heart you're coming from soul and the chart these energies are lower but it's the integrity that you speak and see things through it's the wisdom that you've taken through your own work you know through your own healing through your own journey and when you're able to see something and make it what it can be or know what it needs, that it can be the fullest expression of itself, so then that fullest expression of itself can grow into an even bigger fullest expression of itself. And it just allows so much beauty to be had and to be held and to be seen. And, and even just one thing, but that one thing is ever expanding. So it's 
truly, truly a beautiful combination and it knows and it waits and it's okay with that because it trusts. Cindy is pantomiming. I know, I'm pantomiming. And pretty soon it's going to be like, it's like, oh, the big thing comes up and says, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for coming. What, what I do want to remind everybody is that this weekend on Sunday, May 6th, Karen has a class because not only do what we did today, what well, actually, what Mary and Jamie did today was give you a brief, piece of your, your natal puzzle. But each of these planets has a cycle that goes around it. And Saturn is one of the main cycles that can happen every 28 and a half, 29 years. And when that comes, that's asking you, well, have you learned from these challenges? And what Karen is doing is she's doing a life cycle class. And interesting enough, it's not just the intensive on Sunday. She's going to have special supplementary sessions for each life cycle so say i will i will speak from i'm coming up on my saturn, second saturn life cycle i'm kind of in the pre-period for it right now it's like ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so i would go to the saturn life cycle just to see if how i could what that information what could i could use so that saturn that cosmic two by four doesn't come and hit me really hard <laughs> Then there's a, and then there's other life cycles. There's the Uranus life cycle. There's yeah, I'm in the middle of that. <laughs> there's the Chiron life cycle. She's going to give a little bit of information on both those, and then have that special. And I will put a link underneath. Now I'm going to let both Mary and Jamie are are going to have their link for reading, so that you can get the whole picture of you, because just knowing your challenge and that you're just going what? oh. <laughs> Uh, There's a whole get... picture for your energetic, and this will this will be replayed. It will be on the Facebook page, and it will also be on YouTube, and we'll send out the link tomorrow. But uh, Jamie, of course, is our potion lady. She does the flower essences. We'll put a link for that there, and a link if you'd like to get a, a reading on your whole energetic profile from Jamie. And Mary, do you want to talk about your um, opt-in on, on the wonderful... You have some wonderful meditations, is that correct? Uh, now Mary's pantomiming. Mary, you're pantomiming, you have to... <laughs> yes. Okay, now you're not pantomiming. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I forgot I muted myself because I was like breathing hard. Um, <laughs> anyway, see I'm going through my Chiron return right now, so there we go. Um, and that's all about control. Um, Yes, my meditation series is all about creating abundance and prosperity. I love working with energy work. I bring it all together based on not just your um, human design, your astrology, your numerology, uh, but I created a five-part series, meditation series, to help you get into the vibrational frequency of abundance so you can attract more love, wealth, health, whatever it is in your life meaning prosperity, because that's what prosperity is. So that is my gift, my five-part gift to anybody who would like to opt in. And Cindy, I don't know where you want me to, <laughs> if you're going to put the link in. Um, we will send the link. Okay. Replay email. They're going to be on the description and on the Facebook video. They're also going to be in the description if you prefer to watch on YouTube. There's so many different places. I'm, I'm trying to post them, but the chat is not going to be there for very long, but I'm posting them on Facebook right now. Okay. And again, I'll have, there's going to be two links for both, one for Mary for her prosperity and wealth with her series, that, and then also if you wanted to get, because again, I can't emphasize this enough, just knowing your Saturn and your Jupiter is just, it's a small part of your puzzle, and when you have a reading, and Karen has mentioned this also, that one of the one of the things she thinks everyone should have is a human design reading so that you can understand what your energetic tendencies are, what your, you know, what you might be here, what lessons you decided you wanted to come to learn, what your conundrums. I mean, we haven't even talked about conundrums in the chart yet. And, Don't go there. <laughs> and Karen also, what, uh, next week Karen will be back and I, she's going to talk about Uranus. Ooh, so another biggie that's one of those that's one of those outer planets i mean saturn is still considered a personal planet 
and, and the ancients knew about Saturn. Those were, these are new. So thank you everybody, and the links will be underneath, and also I'll post them in the description, but the replay will be up on Facebook within like five minutes. Facebook's really fast. They'll be up on YouTube maybe tonight. It's not quite so fast, but thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jamie. Bye.